Hey there, everybody. I hope you're doing well in 2019. Here we are. We made it through 2018. I had a conversation with my cousin yesterday, I think it was, and uh, just talking about the creative life and creative coaching. And uh, I wanted to put a video together and I didn't want to wait until I had great lighting, until I wasn't in my car, um, until I was at home and all that good stuff. Because I, I, I feel so passionate about this and I don't think about I don't think it's talked about enough. So um, just with creating creativity in your in your life, um, sometimes it's uh, sorry, I just got a text message in. Sometimes it can be simple. Um but I find as an adult with adult responsibilities, whether you have a mortgage, whether you have rent and you have a household to run, I can find it, I find it to be very challenging to have creativity in your life, to be able to find time uh, to be creative. So I broke it down in some uh, categories, uh, people, uh, time and money, space, and then I put personal care, personal self-care in there as well. Um, so with people, um, you need people, right, to do your creative process. So you're going to need somebody to help you to distribute or to help you behind the scenes, get organized things. Sometimes uh, maybe you're not strong at a certain activity and you need someone to help you with that. So uh, being able to recognize those people that come along and can be a part of your team and that can support you. I have a few of those and I think you know who you are um, that are god sense in the creative process um <clears throat> excuse me and uh you also have people that are haters are fearful i personally don't like the word haters i think it's a little bit too um um i don't know what it is it just but what i see when somebody uh comes to tear you down in your creative process it's usually fear right so you can be a Jedi of fear and you can take their fear and you can uh, repurpose their fear and use it for as fuel to motivate you to keep doing your thing. Um, sometimes you have to tell those people they need to back up, you know, they need to, and you have to uh, extricate them out of your life. Um, so you're going to need supporters. Um, and, you, and it's funny because anytime you do something creative in our world, it seems to me that there is someone who's fearful that shows up with a uh, pessimistic attitude of, oh, the fear. And the, well, if you do that, then this, you know. Um, and this is adding creativity as an adult. When you're a kid and you're in college and or high school, it's fairly easy. Um, you just don't have the responsibilities. But as an adult, it's totally different. So that's the perspective I'm, I'm coming from. Uh, time. Uh, in your adult life as adults and wanting creativity in their time is going to be really important. So I would say if you can carve out an hour a day, an hour a day to do your creative thing, whatever it is, writing, music, art, hour a day. Okay. And this really, I think this video is really catered to people who have been creative at one time and walked away from it. And want to get it back in their life, but they have a mortgage, they got kids, they got a wife, a husband, they got responsibilities. And thinking, trying to wrap your head around being creative, even an hour a day can be overwhelming to think, where am I going to find out? I don't have an hour. So uh, that's going to be a personal thing, how you work that out. But all you need is an hour a day. You don't need five hours a day, just one hour uh, in the morning, in the evening, before work after work, you know, um, you may have to not watch a certain show, whatever that, you know, wh whatever it is that, that cut that out and replace it with creativity. That may be what you have to do. Um, there's no critique there cause I get it. So there's no judgment. Um, but you know, you, you have to sometimes get pretty, um, intentional with your time. Um, and then you have to be consistent with your time. If you can do that every single day, then your 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 chances of actually finishing your creative project or projects, you know, your if you're doing poems, if you're doing books, if you're doing art pieces, music pieces, um, 
even if you're doing crafting, you got to make time for it. Um, and then money. Money is a big one because you're going to need supplies. You're going to need, there's very few creative things that you don't need anything. I think if you're writing, you probably can do it. But if you want to get real serious about it and really add it in your life, you may need a computer. Now, you may just want, need a tablet. All right, no, excuse me, a notepad. And you want to write on that or a journal or whatever. That may be enough. That and a good pen and you're going to go. That is pretty easy. But money for supplies. Me being an artist and a musician, there's sometimes uh, there's, there's studio time that I have to pay for. There's travel costs if you have to go do a show. There's clothes that you have to buy. There's, um, as an artist, there's canvases, there's sketchbooks, and art supplies are expensive uh, if you want good stuff, good quality. And you want to create, and all my art is handcrafted, handmade. I want the best quality that I can possibly afford. So um, I think you can start your, your uh, creative uh, fund with as little as $5 a paycheck. Um, or, and, and as high as $20. If you can do $20 per paycheck, you're, you can do some stuff. Cause I believe it's over 200 bucks. If you save that over the course of six months, and then you dump that 200 bucks into your creative process, it's your creative fund, but you want to organize yourself in that where you have some money aside just in case you need, cause there's a lot of things that come up and you don't want money to be a hindrance, but you can start as little as $5. I mean, you get fifteen dollars. You can do. You can. You can create some traction with fifteen dollars. Um, so money, um, and then you're gonna be. You need to be able to sell your product. So and there's marketing that goes into selling what you do. Um, be open to that because you don't know. You know. I think there's a lot of fear. I don't think there's too many people that are leaning on the side of with their product or whatever they create. And when it comes time to sell it, that they think, oh. Most people, most artists, what I'm trying to say is underprice themselves. They don't charge enough or they don't, they don't think it's good enough, but that leave, don't, don't really focus on that because you'll have someone that wants to buy your art. And even if it's not maybe high level yet, if they want to buy it, they want to buy it. Do you think? So, um, there's more that could be said about money, but I'm gonna move on to, um, I have my I had notes here because I want to cover everything. Space. So physical space. There's a real power in having physical space to for your creativity. So a room, a corner of a room, you need to have space. And as an adult, again, I find this to be very uh, challenging. Space is really challenging because if you're creating art or some sort of creativity, uh, finding space. Now, as a writer, you could probably go to a public library. You can go to a Starbucks. You can plug in and you can get into it. Um, but when you really get serious, so if you're writing like a book, you need like a, a room, you either got to rent one or there's one in your house. So if you have that kind of space, it's a blessing because I find it so challenging to create art and have space. Now I have some things happening where I'll have studio space and all that good stuff, but Oh, it's not easy to come by. Um, so space and uh, is really important. And I think there's a power in sitting down and carving out a physical space for your creativity. Certain things, I think, don't get launched if you don't have a sp physical space. You'll never do it if you don't set aside this space to do it, right? Um. What else is there? Space is so big. I could go, I may make another video on just your space. When I actually get into my studio, I'll do a tour of it. Um, I'll be sharing a studio with another lovely artist. Um, but I'll, I will uh, do a tour, a, a studio tour, just a little, you know, show you what's in there. Um, personal care. Personal care is personal self care is just that is personal. You know what you need. Um, that's something that to me helps you to create at your highest level, the better you take care of yourself. And it's something that I've failed at and something that I'm learning 
your mental, your physical, your spiritual, whatever that means to you, learning how to take care of that. Um, because you are the vessel with which all of the creativity, all of the art, whatever your art is, flows. So you got to take care of that. Um, and as I get older, I'm, you see these gray hairs? I'm learning that. Uh, so this is a 10 minute video, longer than most of my videos, but go in peace. I'm going to be, this is the last but not least, before I say go in peace, I'm thinking about doing some creative coaching, but I would need to get paid for it. So if I don't need a lot, but I wouldn't be able to just, uh, just give my time away for free because time is so crucial. So I'm right now, what comes to my mind is 20 bucks an hour. Um, I can do a creative like coaching brainstorming session, tell you some of the more detailed uh, things that I go through and have to ha have had to work through in order to keep my creative process growing as an artist. Um, sometimes you got to move out of state. Sometimes you got to partner with people. There's so many things you have to do uh, that you may have to do. Who knows? But uh, that's what I got going now. I, I'm going to be real specific. I don't want to just market that and just take on a bunch of clients because I have my own art practice. But if somebody's stuck on something and you got $20 you can invest, you PayPal that to me or get it to me and I will sit with you and coach you through all the things that I've learned with how to create uh, your art, whatever that is. Uh, my expertise are in actual paintings and drawings and canvas and marketing that and selling it and music, you know, venues, tickets, uh, CD album, producing albums, touring, budget-wise with budgeting. I bu I've um, put together several tours over the years. And so doing that whole travel thing and how to keep your costs right and just all that stuff. So that's, excuse me, my areas of expertise. Uh, writing and getting that published. I know people that are pretty um, knowledgeable about that and can refer you to them. Um self-publishing is, I think, is where it's at. And then, um, in order to just get your art, your art seen, um, what else is there? That's pretty much it. So if you're interested, um, again, this is not a sales pitch. This is nothing that I need. This is just something that I'm putting out. And I think this, I want to put out more of this content tent just for the value. Um, so I don't want, I'm not trying to create a whole nother business and be coaching a bunch of people, but, um, that I, I will make myself available for that. So if you got $20, boom, you got an hour of my time. Um, now it'll probably go up, you know, <laughs> and come middle of the year cause I have so much more going on, but, um, that there you have it. Peace.